Greetings. This will be a brief discussion on the weird hellscape that is Eclipse printers. Now, this is a convoluted mess and I'm going to gloss over it just very, very briefly. So, in the original days of Eclipse, uh, Eclipse, as you know, is based on the Rocket Universe database, uh, which is a PIC system which was invented back in 1969 or so by Richard Pick and predates SQL by quite a number of years. And it is a multi-value database, which is kind of hard to wrap your head around, but, um, and we won't get into details of that. But the PIC system was originally designed not as a database engine as much as an entire operating system that did databases. Uh, when Richard Pick originally wrote the darn thing, you took a mainframe and you wiped the native operating system and you loaded the PIC operating system into it. So it had its own uh, terminal language, its own printer queue management system, uh, tape loading and all of that good stuff. A lot of that ancient stuff is still buried in the bowels of Rocket Universe in there somewhere. Uh, later on, when they went to modernize it and use it as a database engine, the, they kind of they kind of uh, put a wrapper around it, so you have a operating system sort of that runs within uh, your Red Hat Linux uh, host. Um, I know that's insane. Um, but the, the, the filing system and the universe database files, um, they kind of have two different ways of looking at them. Anyway, uh, not getting too much in the weeds here. Um, so in the universe system, you used to have to create a printer in three stages. You used to have to be created in universe and defined, and then you went to your Linux system and you used uh, uh, line printer daemon commands, cups commands and such, and you created uh, the Unix uh, Linux print queues there. And then uh, you had tools in eTerm to be able to uh, manage the queues. And it was really kind of confusing because you, you had uh, the old universe print queues, which could get jammed up, and you also had the uh, Linux print queues could get, that could get jammed, jammed up. And trying to untangle where a printer problem happened um, was a real mess. Uh, now, as uh, you probably know, uh, terminal setup and terminal IDs, um, these wonderful things here, uh, between the uh, defining the printers uh, and then assigning printers to terminal IDs. This is how Eclipse um, knows uh, when you log in to a certain location that is determined by the terminal ID. Uh, in eTerm, this is either uh, under communications here, so my ID is branch one office, uh, or in solar, it's under here under I think solar preferences and we see branch one office when that terminal ID is used um, that tells the Eclipse system where the sales orders and the transfer orders and the purchase orders uh, what branch they should be by default book to unless I select otherwise and it also um, uh, tells the uh, the system which printers are closest to me to print the various forms for. Back in the day, Eclipse was assumed that it was using pre-printed forms, and those pre-printed forms were already loaded up in trays, and, and so you had to define in each printer what form was in what tray, so it knew what to print. Then later on, they expanded out, so you used uh, blank colored paper and they wrote PDF forms that uh, that would be on the fly written in there, but you still had to define what tray you wanted the form to come out of, so it came out in the right color paper, which was a pain to set up. And then later on, they uh, decided to use another system called Eclipse Forms uh, or Transforms, um, 
which is a third party package and I really I've never been able to get a very good accurate information on what it does what was intended for uh, I just know it's expensive and it's uh, kind of a black box but uh, all current Eclipse systems nowadays use uh, transforms uh, for emailing uh, and printing the the forms out of Eclipse uh, but all the old stuff is still buried in there they never take anything away they just kind of figure out hooks and shortcuts to fake the system into using another module anyway so in the old eTerm and Eclipse you still have the old uh, functions for managing the um, Linux print queues and the the universe queues but those are seldomly used anymore then they don't really apply in it in this situation anymore um, with the exception of say if we go to our Linux server with a putty session and look in and run the LP stat command uh, this shows this shows all the uh, Linux print queues that are supposed to be in for printing the the various um, uh, forms uh, most of these really don't apply the only one that really applies here is LP 10 if you've got if you've got a zebra printer that print labels that system still does not use transforms eclipse forms it still uses the old uh, Linux cups printer system and, and and locally defined labels that are custom hand-coded PDF code uh, the rest of these things are really kind of bogus um, anyway that's the ancient history I know it's confusing but the good thing is is you really don't have to deal much with that anymore so modern Eclipse systems are a two server setup you will have a Red Hat Linux server and that's where the main Eclipse application resides uh, that's what solar and eTerm are talking directly to that's where the universe database uh, is sitting and uh, some of the other one of the companion products like uh, the well the Eclipse reports the web-based interface I think runs on the Linux system and um, and maybe Eclipse mobile not entirely sure anyway that's the primary system you also have a second server which is a Windows server probably a Windows uh, 2019 server or, uh, or at least 2011 um, that one houses the actual print queues that all your printers are, are running off of and it also runs the transform software that is uh, taking taking the the form information that needs to be printed from the from the Eclipse application and actually rendering it and sending it to the printer so yeah I know that gets confusing as all get out also if you've got companion products um, like um, as I said I think Eclipse mobile maybe but proof of delivery um, uh, uh, document imaging all of these things will use your Windows server and uh, this Epicor is a little shy on giving you a lot of information on the plumbing that uh, that is behind the scenes that makes Eclipse works and I'm sure they probably do that on purpose uh, much to your frustration uh, that makes troubleshooting damn near impossible by anyone but them uh, which I find irritating but anyway so uh, looking at our our Windows server um, if we uh, poke down here a bit and where is it all right we can see these are actually the print queues that uh, that the Eclipse system is using so they're they're regular SMB uh, print print shares so all of your HP 4100 or M602 DNs or whatever uh, your Eclipse printers uh, are all attached here and managed on this Windows server uh, now uh, Eclipse forms transforms how it works uh, is I'm not entirely sure to tell you honestly but my best understanding is is there's an SMB share on your Eclipse server um, uh, I think it's called message out I believe the uh, the system e either either this one or another share like it um, Eclipse will uh, generate uh, the order form uh, or, or whatever form needs to be rendered it will go into this um, file share um, 
the Formscape or Transform software. We'll go out to the File Share regularly, look for a new uh, file, pull it in, and then process it and send it out to the printer. Or we'll render it and I believe send it back to uh, to Eclipse uh, so that the um, the mailer daemon, uh, which I believe is uh, uh, Postfix, uh, can take it and uh, forward it out to be emailed. Uh, so very very strange setup. So that's the background. Uh, so occasionally, you know, Windows print queues being Windows print queues will occasionally jam up. So don't look at the Red Hat system uh, to to be clearing queues. Look at your Windows server because that's where the actual print queues are at. Um, despite what your what your Linux box may indicate it looks like it's got. As I said, that doesn't apply to the Zebra label printers. The Zebra label printers are still run on the, on the Unix system and do not use transforms. Okay, now um, the biggest thing that most people are going to be dealing with is uh, assigning forms or maybe creating new uh, locations. Uh, uh, most of the time you you probably wouldn't create a printer yourself I and I'm not entirely sure you can now because as convoluted as the system is I'm not sure how it's defined and short-circuited in Eclipse to know to send the right forms out the right simulated printer to <laughs> to the Windows <laughs> print server <laughs> I once again bear with me uh, information is sparse so normally you have Epicor set up a printer from that time. You occasionally have to clear a queue or uh, change forms or define new terminal IDs so another group of users can use a slightly different arrangement of printers. That's all you do with that. Uh, that is mostly managed by the Eclipse forms. Um, so here you have the Eclipse forms printer where they're defined and um, I don't think that when you create a new printer here it actually creates the print queue windows but I might be wrong um, so bear with me on that one so a printer is defined here and then uh, forms maintenance is where you assign um, or should it should assign uh, I'm sorry, I got discombobulated here. No, in Eclipse Forms maintenance is where the where the printer is defined and what forms you map to which tray. So, as I said, more than anything else, this is more than likely what you're going to do. You, you're uh, more than likely going to come across a form that's printing to the wrong tray because you've changed the model printer, or who knows, it's always been that way. And then you have to do a little tweak here so that uh, transform will send the form to the right tray in the right printer. So in this case, we're going to do a quick fix of a transfer shipper form that currently is uh, printing on white paper and they want to print it on yellow paper. So we have to swap the trays. In this case, we're going to do the branch to office printer. And we're going to take a look at the tray mapping. And we see the sales pick ticket, which we know is printing in yellow. That's tray two. So apparently yellow paper is stored in tray two. So we'll go ahead here and take a look at our transfer orders, quotations, registers, shippers. And we've got them all set to three. So we want to change those to two so that they all print on yellow. Okay, and manifest, we'll leave that alone. All right, so now the shipper will hopefully go from white paper to yellow paper like it's supposed to. And then we do a uh, file and save, and that would complete the process. And as I said, more than anything, not uh, doing things like changing what color paper the forms are printing out of or what tray, uh, is most of what you're going to do with Eclipse Forms. If you have problems and things go derailed, you're pretty much going to have to do an Epicor uh, um, uh, case and have them troubleshoot it. But it does help a little bit to have some idea of the weird plumbing that's behind it, of where things are going and why. 
um, because they may need to uh, uh, need your help in identifying the problem and troubleshooting it a bit. Now, uh, a final thought, and that is um, Linux, as you know, is pretty dead simple, and it can go for uh, years without a reboot, um, and Windows, not so much. Uh, usually on a Windows uh, machine, it's gotten a little bit better over the years, but uh, memory leaks and whatever else, and hanging processes and whatever, uh, the Windows system will get erratic and do weird things. Uh, after several months of running. So it's a good idea if your printers start behaving oddly or such, reboot your Windows print server uh, on a regular basis every few months or so to make sure that it's, that it's uh, as stable as it's going to get. Uh, anyway, I hope uh, this not entirely useful information was of some benefit, and thank you for your attention.